name is Amanda. I was an HOA manager for many years, so hopefully my background with this will help you guys out. Um, I am customer success, so for those of you who don't work with me uh, specifically, you all do have a customer success manager that would be happy to assist you with anything that you see today. So if you don't quite catch something or need some additional assistance or one-on-one, -on -one, always feel free to follow up with them. Uh, but the agenda for today's uh, webinar is first and foremost, what are TOPS 1 CCNR codes and why are we talking about them? What are the requirements for CCNR code setup? Uh, you will need your governed documents, rules and regs, enforcement, violation, architectural policies and whatnot, obviously, to get these set up in TOPS 1. So it's good to have those to follow along with. Uh, within each CCR code, we'll talk about the code setup itself, including action processes and templates that are required. Uh, and then again, part two is going to be just more in depth on the property inspection side. Lastly, we'll go through some resources. So, what are TOPS 1 CCNR codes and why are we talking about them? The CCRs are the covenants, conditions, and restrictions of a community. They are the community rules and regs in an HOA or POA. They describe the requirements and limitations about what homeowners can and can't do with their properties. The goal of the CCNRs is to protect, preserve, and enhance property values in the community. The top 1 CCNR codes are configurable codes within each community that allow the user to predefine various CCR-related scenarios for easy entry and processing of property violations and architectural modifications. So just like I mentioned at the start of the call, you can set up this system to tell you what to do next with any given violation or architectural modification request based on what you set up in the system as far as language in the code from the documents and what the homeowners need to do to correct it and how that follows a first letter, second letter, third letter, and so on and so on uh, process. The requirements for CCR codes and inspections. Again, first off, you're going to need your governing documents or whatever rules and regs or documentation speaks to the rules and what the homeowners can and can't do. Uh, the CCNR code setup within each CCNR code, you'll have a code alias and description. We'll talk a little bit more about that and see what that entails here in just a bit. Also, the action processes, that's that process where you put step one as first letter, step two as second letter, maybe by certified mail. Third step might include a fine. You might have some subsequent action after that. So that's uh, the action process set up and then the templates that you're going to tie to those action processes and those various steps and then third and finally the requirements for property inspections again we'll get more into that on Thursday's webinar but the only requirements for conducting property inspections with TOPS 1 is a mobile device with web access so a tablet or a smartphone and Google Chrome is the best browser so you could use Safari and others but they're not as good you will have some performance issues most likely so I always use Chrome uh, we will go through this PowerPoint presentation and then I'll show you a live demo at the end. So you don't have to take crazy notes or remember all of this. I know some of these images are a little small, but I'll show you the live uh, demonstration here in just a bit to give you a better sense of how this all actually works. But the CCNR codes, codes are located in the community profile page under the related links menu. So on each community profile, you'll scroll down to the bottom. At the bottom right, there's a related links and under that is a codes menu. You click on that and then you'll have the little workflow KPI button you can click that'll take you straight to the CCR codes. They will all show when you first get to the screen, but you'll have to scroll through charge codes and service request codes and things like that. So I prefer just to click workflow and go straight to the CCNR codes. Um, but within each one of these, you will need a code alias. So just like you see balcony, grass gutter, INS, LWN, these are all the code aliases. They're just short abbreviations for the code description, and you will get used to this as you use the system more and more. If you've got multiple associations using the same naming convention can be helpful. You'll get used to what codes represent which violations. So I do recommend the characters, the letter characters versus the digits, the numbers, but that's just me personally. So for each one, a code alias, a code description, which is just a description of the code. This one, for instance, is grass must be cut or, you know, balcony needs repair, plants on balcony, et cetera. The articles from the governing document. So again, just the language that you're gonna put in the code and in the letters speaking to the homeowners about what they're in violation of. The action to resolve, what they need to do to correct it. Uh, the action process with templates and fine amounts. So those action processes we talked about with each step having its own template letter and its own fine amount if such applies. The date calculation method, there can be one of 
two options here. You can do by last action date, which is what we'll typically use. That just means the system is going to queue up the next action uh, based on the last action you took. Um, so 10 days from the last activity or 15 or whatever versus the original citation date. Uh, there's a date calculation method for create date as well. And that one um, we don't use so much, but that would just mean from the original citation date. Uh, lastly, the income receivable account. Uh, you don't need both for cash accounting, just the income account. For any accrual accounting, you will need both. This is a requirement to setting up CCNR codes. Uh, sometimes people ask if they can get away with not using this. We can't. You need somewhere to post any of those fees. So you do need an income receivable account. This is an example of what those are here. The linked accounts, you can see I've got a cash account for income and a receivable account here. But this just shows different components of the CCNR code setup. This one is for balcony. I've got balcony as the coder alias, clear balcony as the code name, the CCR article referencing this, the detailed description and the action to resolve, as well as the date calculation method. So again, here I could choose last action date or create date. Uh, and the action process, this one is set to custom, which means I can stipulate the actions down here in this action process by clicking these little pencils and making changes or adding steps. But I also, once I have my action processes set up, we'll have a drop down here with various options to pick different ones. Maybe I have a default process that most violations take and an architectural modification review process that obviously is going to be completely different and maybe a violation process that has a hearing with the board as the third step. And so I need a different action process for different types of violation codes to fit that. So it gives you options to change those here, uh, but that's just your basic CCR code set up. CCR action processes on each code allow for actions, letters, and fees to be correlated to each step of the violation enforcement and architectural review process. Action processes are found in the codes menu in the golden actions tab. So just like we go to codes to access the CCNR codes, that's where we're going to go to get to these action processes. Next page is just going to show some examples of what that action process page is going to look like whether I'm adding a new one through my actions tab up here at action process or using the pencil to edit one that's existing. I can come in and add steps or edit any that are already in the process. You can see I've got days from, this is where it's gonna do that last action date. So one day it's cited 11 or 10 days later, total of 11 days, 30 days later, total of 41 days and how those escalate with each step. Obviously I have to tie a template to each Part of the action process. Uh, so we will look at how to make sure those templates are in the template library uh, and set up for you as well so you can tie those to the action processes and then the codes. You can copy action processes from one community to another. So you don't have to fret that you have to set these up individually in every single one. This one specifically is for Hawks Landing, but I could easily use this copy action process button to copy it over to my other communities. Action processes can be assigned to CCNR codes one of two ways. The first option is if you're creating the action process itself in that menu we were just looking at. You have this button here to assign, circled in red. I can click that and then pick the various CCNR codes I want to apply this action process to. Click assign and then the next prompt will be, do you want to update all of the codes tied to this action process with the changes? And you say yes. The next screen will actually prompt you if you want to update all existing CCR tickets and records with these changes. So it's really neat. Um, let's say you have several open violations for speeding and the board then decides they want you to implement a hearing notice and give the homeowners an opportunity to speak to them before you fine. That's not something that would have already been built into your action process, but you could change it here uh, and then use this option to just apply it to all the codes tied to that action process as well as all the open existing CCR tickets and records tied to that. The second way to assign action processes is to do it from the code itself. So you can, just like in our clear balcony example, if we were back there and I was editing this code, instead of using the custom option where I build out the action process down here, I could pick one of these predefined ones, the default process, architectural if that's what's suitable, or the process with the board hearing. So it just shows at any time you can change the action processes as well and assign them one of two ways. Lastly, again, is the templates. You do have to have templates tied to all of the action processes, just like you just saw on the prior screen. 
Uh, they must be tied to, tied to each step of the action process in order for a letter notice to be issued during that stage. The best practice is to set all these up prior to configuring the action processes, obviously, because you want templates in there when you create your action processes. So I will show you within your admin menu if you're not already aware of where to find and upload these. There's a way to search for specifically CCNR letters, click search, and then it'll show you anything that's loaded there. You should have some basic examples that were loaded to your top one instance in a sample community when you first got set up, but we have a template marketplace with a lot of great resources that we can give you if you don't want to have to pull out all the merge codes from Microsoft Word or copy and paste. Uh, we have some good templates you can work with. This just shows what the template assignment is going to look like on the action process. So again, I'm on this uh, CCR clear balcony code. I'm creating the custom action process on this code, and I want to pull in a letter. So I'm just going to click the pencil to edit, use this drop down. And as long as the template's available in my template library, I'll be able to choose it here. Make sure I got everything on that page. Oh, same thing. This is just telling you if you're updating the action process or anything on the actual code, you're going to get that same option just like we saw before to update any and all existing CCR records and tickets associated with that code. So again, just really you know, full circle on how you can manage that. Uh, resources, we are going to get into a live demonstration, uh, but just to show you some of the resources that you can and should use after the webinar, in addition to the recording and the PowerPoint that's going to be available to you, you can and should always visit the support site for the knowledge-based articles. There's a whole series of foundations training covering some of this and more on CCR templates, merge codes, et cetera, but then everything top 10 related. So that's a good series to watch and just stay fresh up on. And the weekly CS webinars and recordings, just like this one, we do have a weekly webinar. Um, you can reach out to your success rep at any time, again, to schedule one-on-one -on -one, uh, time and training. And then just some links to relevant topics that we're talking about today, the CCR codes, action processes, templates, and merge codes. These are going to be specific to today's session. The filters and views and batch violation actions, those are going to be more for Thursday's webinar going over the inspection processes. Within this webinar, you can register for Thursdays to go through the best practices for property inspections. But with that, I'm going to close out of the PowerPoint and open up TOPS 1 and just show you a little bit of this in real time. Don't log me out. No. Oh, no. Sorry, guys. Looks like I have to pop back in here. All right. So first... I like to obviously start at the homepage so everybody knows what you're looking at. We're all looking at the same thing. Uh, this is your homepage for TOPS 1, for lack of a better term. First thing we're going to look at is making sure those templates are set up for CCNR items. So I'm going to pop into my admin menu, scroll down here to template library under related links. and use this little magnifying glass guy here to choose CCNR letters, click search, and then I can narrow down to just what CCR related. You can see I've got a pretty healthy list of templates here. Again, you can get all these and more from our template marketplace and from your CS rep that can help you with this. But for my purposes, I have these set up, so I don't need to do much here. But if you did need to add an additional template, you come up to actions, add template, choose CCNR letter, Description, you can call it whatever you want, friendly reminder, first notice, whatever. Pick if it's going to be certified or email. Upload the document from wherever it lives on your PC. And there will be an upload option, and it will tell you once it's successfully uploaded. Once you've confirmed that all of your CCNR letters are in place, you from the community want to get the codes and action processes set up. So I'm going to pop into my demo community here, Hawks Landing. Scroll down again to related links down here at the bottom right. I'm going to click on codes. Again, it's going to give me all codes. I don't necessarily want all 31 codes of all types. I just want the workflow codes, which are CCR specific. There's some other stuff down here too, but we won't worry about that for today. You guys are just curious today about CCR. So you see all the same ones that were in my screenshot. Disregard this one. It came over in an initial conversion that I don't really like. So for our purposes, we'll you kind of use the balcony down. But you can see I've got some various examples here of violations. An annual inspection that's required might be a special, you know, 
code set up action process for this one, and then architectural submittals. So I use the clear balcony as an example for <clears throat> the edit. I click the little pencil icon, takes me into the CCNR code where I can change the code alias if I wanted it to be BAL or BLC or whatever. I'll leave it balcony. Code name clear balcony, CCR article, governing document language, detailed description, the action to resolve, either create date or last action date for the date calculation method. The action process. So this is where I've got my predefined drop down list of all the different action processes that I set up. I will show you how to do that here in just a bit. But let's say this guy was only set to custom and only had the option for custom. That just makes it so that I can come down here and within any of these action steps use the pencil to make changes to the days, the fee, the letter, the spelling because that's wrong. So we'll fix that right now. Uh, and you can add, you can have as many different lines as you want. So if I want a fifth violation with another subsequent fine, I could add that here. That'll be 61 days, let's say 10 days after the last one, another $50 fine. And we'll say violation of fine, yeah. Okay, you've got your income and receivable accounts here. Don't forget to have these tied as well. And then that option to update all OpenCCR records with the changes. Yes, I do want to do that. Oops. Now, action processes. You saw how you can set it up on the code itself on that custom option, but ideally when you set up those codes, you'll have them preset so that you can just put them on there. So you do want to come in here to this codes menu, come up to the golden actions tab, find action processes. You can see I've got three set up already, a default violation process, one with a board hearing step, and one for architectural modifications. So just to show you how the edit process works, if I wanted to add, just come up that action process. Edit process is going to look really simpler, similar, just edit. And again, I can come into any of these steps and make changes, add additional, if for whatever reason I wanted to delete it entirely. And then I can click update, or I can use this nifty assign option just like we saw in the PowerPoint, and I want to assign my default action process to the balcony, the grass, the gutter, lawn, and that's it. And yes, I want to update the codes. Yes, I want to update the existing records. Update. Come on. And I'll just go ahead and do the same just so you guys can see it. A few times I'm going to assign the architectural review process to ACC submittals. Update those as well. And lastly, the violation action with hearing, assign. We'll say we want that on miscellaneous violations. So very easy. You can do it both ways. You can do it from the code itself or from the action process. And again, make sure the templates are tied to it. Uh, we will, I'll kind of give you a sneak peek into what we're going to take a look at on Thursday. We'll be mostly in the CCNR tickets menu. And we'll have this view of all open violations and we'll go through and talk about how to do this with a mobile device in the field. Uh, the one thing that comes up here is, is again, if you want the system to be able to accrue the stuff for you and kind of sign off on it before it goes and make last minute changes, you just need to make sure that the configuration is, is set up completely from the start. We appreciate you joining us. Have an awesome day.